everyone, Alexa here from the blog theduvalhomestead.com where I write about farm to table recipes and homemade natural living. And today I'm sharing a really exciting DIY with you. It is how to create a rustic weathered wood. You can do this for any wood project that you're working on. We did it here for our new king size bed frame. So I'm gonna take you along step by step. It's very easy and quick to do this on your own and so I'm gonna show you how. have little Allison here in my wrap because she tends to not like it when I put her down and so she's gonna be in most of my videos for the time being because that's what she prefers. If you have ever been to Restoration Hardware, you know those really nice rich wood pieces and my husband and I really like that style in our house but they are so expensive. This headboard and bed frame behind me that my husband built, if we were to have bought this from Restoration Hardware, it would have costed about $6,000. Turns out you can do that way cheaper if you just spend some time on it yourself. Now, another project that we've done similar to this was our farmhouse dining table. I'll leave a link below to that if you want. I do share free plans for that, so if you want to build that yourself along with a bench, you can find that at the link below. It's really nice to be able to create your own custom and pieces, especially for a headboard or a bed frame because they last you forever. They just never show wear and tear. We are very proud of this piece. So the first thing you wanna do is clear your work area and create a workstation. We laid our headboard and footboard on like these little sawhorses, basically these little stands that you can prop up so that you're not leaning over on. First thing you wanna do for your wood is to sand it down. We use a DeWalt hand sander and just make sure that the wood is even and smooth before you start staining. So to create this rustic weathered look, you are first going to stain the wood black. Now this can be really frightening, especially if you're wanting something white or bright, but that is the first step. It gives it that look of being weathered and used and old. So you're gonna stain the entire thing black. You wanna just use a paintbrush and gloves and a paint tray to do this. After you've stained it, you want to go over the stain with a rag or an old t-shirt and just wipe the stain down a little bit. This will help prevent big clots of liquid forming and it will also help dry it faster. Don't worry too much about perfection here because you're going to be sanding this in just a minute anyway. When you paint and when you wipe, go in the direction of the wood grain. You don't want to go against it. After you have stained it black, you want to let it dry for two hours. After two hours, you want to sand the black wood. So we used a orbital hand sander. Now one little tip here is that you will use a lot of sanding pads, so make sure you have extra on hand. It took a lot of manpower to sand the black down. You wanna press really hard and firmly and it takes several strokes to get the black mostly off. You're not trying to get it all the way off the wood, you just wanna get most of it off. Don't worry about the corners, etc., because again, it's all gonna end up looking really rustic and weathered in the end anyway. But you do wanna have extra sanding pads because it'll eat through the sanding pads pretty fast because you're sanding quite a bit here. By the way, I will have a blog post that details all of this and instructions that you can just print out. So if you're gonna do this, um, I suggest just printing that. It'll be super easy and I'll leave a link for those in the description below. So the next step is to dye the wood brown and that is if you want your wood to look like this, brown with black accents. And we are gonna use a wood dye here, not a wood stain. You could use a wood stain, but a wood dye is better because it penetrates the wood deeper. The color we used for the black stain was General Finishes, it's called Black Wood Stain. The color for the brown is also General Finishes, it's called Light Brown, and it is a wood dye stain. Again, after you've ap applied the brown, you want to wipe it down with a rag or old t-shirt and just get it nice and smooth. And then let that dry for two hours. So now you're done with most of the work. Now you just wanna apply the polyurethane as a finishing coat. We use a water-based polyurethane, and I should have mentioned this at the beginning of the video, but one of our goals in creating this was to really switch from a toxic to a non-toxic lifestyle and we wanted to create everything in our house kind of ourself and with as organic materials as possible. <laughs> so these are water-based stains and the polyurethane that we put on the end is also water-based instead of oil-based. And we also went 
all the way to get an organic mattress and sheets, which I will talk about in another video. But while we are not eating off of this headboard, it's still important to us that it's not omitting anything that is toxic and we want to just keep it as natural as possible. So we applied three coats of the water-based polyurethane and let it sit about two hours between each coat. The polyurethane really glossed it up too. It was very matte finished and it ended up being pretty glossy, but not too glossy. And I really enjoyed how it looked after the polyurethane. It also sealed everything in really nicely and the wood is nice and protected now, just in case it did have water spill on it or something like that. So that is it. That is how you create a weathered rustic wood look yourself, just using some wood stain and wood dye. It's a very easy process, just takes probably a weekend, and you have a beautiful looking piece at the end of it, something that you would find at Restoration Hardware or somewhere very expensive, and people will ask, you know, that looks antique, where did you get that from? And they don't know that it's just the wood from Home Depot and you just stained it yourself. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you are brand new to my page, make sure you subscribe on YouTube and like on Facebook. And don't forget to check out the other farmhouse DIYs. I'll leave a few of them below, such as our farmhouse table and bench and a few others that we've done here on the YouTube channel. Every week I post a new farm to table recipe and homemade natural living from our homestead here in Duval. Thank you so much for stopping by at the Duval Homestead.